If you're looking for success in the vacation rental industry, Heather Bayer and the team at CottageBlogger.com are here to show you that it's entirely within reach. Welcome to Vacation Rental Success, the show that features interviews with industry experts, successful vacation rental owners, and more, all geared toward helping you make it happen. Here's your host, Heather Bayer. Well, hello and welcome to another episode of the Vacation Rental Success Podcast. This is your host, Heather Bayer, and I'm delighted to be back with you again in this wonderful spring weather. I'm sorry, another weather update from the wonderful world of Ontario, where it's mid-April, it's freezing cold, we have a forecast of an ice storm on the way with 30 centimetres of snow, 20 to 33 millimetres of freezing rain, which, you've ever, which if, if you've ever been in a freezing rainstorm, that's quite a lot. And it's enough to break off branches of trees and take power out. So that's going to be fun to look forward to. We just haven't had a spring. There is, has been no spring. I don't think that the, the temperature has not gone into double digits, and that's centigrade, double digits, uh, f- for the last month for the last four weeks, and it's not probably going to go up there until we get into May, at which point it will probably go from freezing one day to into the 70s the next, and we will all ditch our parkas and our boots and our hats and gloves and scarves, and the next day we'll be digging out shorts, T-shirts and shorts and uh, flip-flops. It's always amazing to see this happen because, I don't know, we're, 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 a, we're a nation of people who or certainly in Ontario, and we shiver through the six months of cold. And then when the sun does come out and the warmth happens, uh, we embrace it really big, big time. That aside, I'm going to warm myself up by, by sharing with you a great conversation I've had with my friend, Andy McNulty, who's the founder of two vacation rental industry startups, and that's Touch Stay and Guest Hook. Now, Andy has been on the show a number of times, so you may know of his uh, his history. He's been 10 years in the luxury fashion industry, actually, and he worked um, with Gucci, Alexander McQueen, and Victoria Beckham. But his real passion lies in the vacation rental sector. You may have heard of Guest Hook. Uh, that is solidly out there. And I know so many people who are using Get Guest Hook to help them with their marketing, their copywriting and their branding campaigns for their vacation rental businesses. So, you know, if you haven't heard of Guest Hook, go to the show notes and check out the links to Guest Hook and also to Touch Stay. And we're going to have, have a bit of a chat about Touch Stay on the conversation today. But in general, we are going to be talking about how to master the guest experience. And I know it's something we've done before, but, you know, we need to revisit this over and over again, because in this increasingly competitive world, we need to be creating the experience that our guests are having, because we can be so contributory to their experience from the moment they find us on a listing or on our website to the time that they leave the property and start talking about it to their friends and their co-workers and their family and everything in between. So uh, Andy and I are going to be talking about how to master the guest experience on today's episode. So without further ado, let's move on over to my wonderful conversation with Andy McNulty. So I'm delighted to have back with me again, Andy McNulty from Touch Stay. Andy, how many times have you been on the show? <laughs> um, that's a really good question. <laughs> I think I've lost count. <laughs> I, I would say, it's, uh, do, you, do you know the answer? Is it two or three? No, I don't. I think, it, I think it's pro- maybe even four. I can't remember how- what we talked about. I shall have to go back because I'll put those episodes into the show notes. But I know we talked about um, Touch Stay before. Yeah. And I'm sure we've talked about Guest Hook. Yeah. And, and I think we spoke about the Insider Guides work that we did a while back. The Insider Guides, for sure. Um, so maybe maybe this is, this, is, this is episode four, maybe. <laughs> episode four. Wow, I'm honoured. 
<laughs> well, it's always, it's always lovely to talk to you. And uh, I think my audience always gets such great value out of, out of what you have to say. When we started this conversation before I started recording and I said, you know, Skype just told me we haven't talked for over a year. And I, and I think that's probably right. Were you at VRMA in Amsterdam? I was not at you VRMA were. in Amsterdam. So that was what? That was that, 2017. Yes. So, and you weren't at VRSS last year, were you? I was, no, I was not at VRSS. No. So the whole... 2017, I've kind of, in inverted commas, gone dark from the vacation rental industry. <laughs> um, I was, I mean, we can go into it, but I spent. Um, oh, yeah, the best well, I, part of I want to hear about that because, um, you know, All right. as it, it, yeah. it, it, I mean, sort I, of my celebrity si- spidey sense comes out here, so you best tell me. <laughs> <laughs> yeah, well, I spent, I spent the last year uh, working for Victoria Beckham's fashion business. Before I started vacation rentals, I was in fashion the whole, my whole. Uh, my whole career. And I'd worked at Gucci and Alexander McQueen, et cetera, et cetera. So when I left that industry, I still got called from people saying, hey, would you like to interview for this position or this position? And I would just keep saying, no, no, no. And then when somebody called me at the end of 2016 and said, would you like to come and work for Victoria Beckham? My initial thought was not no, was, hmm, that's interesting. (laughs) So I made the mistake of saying, well, not a mistake. I mean, it, it, it's, uh, I say it now because I've been a year out of the industry and I feel like that is a, a year that I can't get back from the industry. But I took so much great experience away from the, from the process anyway. I just went along and, and I met her and I met the team and I started just doing a couple of days a week because they needed a, a CFO and, and that was my experience. And then the CEO left and they said, would you like to be the interim CEO? Because it's going to take a while to go and find someone permanent. And I, I sort of said, what, really? Yeah, okay, I'll do that. And we went, we went on this roller coaster of, of getting funding from private equity. And suddenly 2017 was gone. And when we did the private equity deal, I thought that's my time to, to, to leave and um, you know, pass the baton on to a inverted commas real CEO who's been there and done that before. And that's what I did. And, and so that's why I wasn't at VRSS and I wasn't at VRMA. I was having a jolly old time working back in fashion. <laughs> but you come back. You always come back to vacation rental. I know there's something about it. You know, as I say it to people, fashion is what I did as a career, but I was never passionate about fashion. I was never, you know, as a, as a kid growing up, I was never one to have the latest fashion and, and all of that sort of stuff. In fact, my wife just jokes because my fashion sense is terrible. So <laughs> for her, the irony of me, me being in fashion is, is hilarious. But vacation rentals is my, is my passion. And it's always, always been a really super interesting industry for me. And, you know, having started Touch Day in 2014 and Guest Look in 2015, you know, there was something for me to come back to. It wasn't like I was coming back and starting a business again. Those businesses, in fact, Guest Hook's been going from strength to strength, you know, run by Jessica um, and, uh, and Amanda on that team and their team of freelance writers. Um, Touch Day is a very different business model because it's a tech product. So it doesn't necessarily require a lot of, you know, active day-to-day time in the product. But uh, coming back to it now, feeling really energized, and we, we rebranded and redesigned uh, Touch Day and the Touch Day app. So we've got a new website, new app skin. Um, and it's just been so energizing to talk to people who had been waiting for that to come for a long time and being, being sort of really proud of the way the product looks now, as well as functionally being a, being a good product. So I feel it, it's a really interesting time for me to come back, especially as, and this is, of course, the subject of the podcast, especially because so much of the focus these days is on the guest experience. You know, I didn't go to VRMA in Amsterdam, but I did go to the one in Paris uh, uh, in February. And um, it struck me how the guest experience has become front and center again. And it's almost less about operational efficiency. Of course, there is still that which is critical, but there's much more of an eye now on the guest experience. And specifically by that, I mean, how does the guest feel about their stay? Uh, are they feeling like it's something special and unique or are they feeling like it's just another stay or just another accommodation type? And when you hear people like Simon Lehman stand up on stage and talk about focusing on 
you know, the guest experience instead of, you know, what he referred to as the top of the funnel and putting your money in developing the guest experience. And then you hear people like Matt Landau talking about, you know, his limited edition. And that's all about creating that really special something for the guest. I just think it's such an interesting time. Um, And I think the next year or so is going to be really interesting for that kind of part of the industry. I, you're, you're so right. It's We've gone from talking about rusty knives and Teflon <laughs> peeling off frying pans and you know making sure the place is spotlessly clean because that is expected as standard these days. Mm-hmm. You know, pe- people just do, don't tolerate the, the types of property that they used to go to 10 years ago. Um, right. when, it, when It was a real gamble whether they were going to get a beautifully presented property like they, they'd seen in pictures or, or whether it was it was going to be a real disappointment, because now the only way to to survive in this in this vacation rental world is to deliver the best presented property possible. So where do you go then on getting a competitive edge? And of course, that's going into making the experience the best for them. Although I still think there's there's some work to be done on even those basics. Um, you know, I I like you have have experienced staying at a rental on both sides of the Atlantic. I, I would say more times than not, if I stay at a, at a rental in the US, particularly in, in the sort of the, the more established resort areas, those days of blunt knives and you know nothing to cook on are gone. I generally don't find an issue with that. But I would say that there's probably parts of Europe where, um, and, and we're not, I'm not sort of saying this is every property manager out there, but I think there are still pockets, and certainly in, in sort of non-mainstream parts of the US, there are still pockets where that is still a problem. And, you know, to, I mentioned Simon again, to hear him standing up and saying that he takes a set of sharp knives with him everywhere again. Now, I, I'm sure that's slightly tongue-in-cheek, but his, but his point is still valid, I think, in a lot of cases. So I think we're sort of at those places where those who have invested in the, the, let's call them the in-home amenities and improving those, probably now morphing more towards what can I do that's a bit different? How can I make it unique? How can I make that guest feel special rather than just feeling like they've got enough at their rental? Yeah. And then there are those who are even at base level who are now sort of hopefully changing their knife sets and putting some pots and pans in their place. Where does the experience begin? The experience doesn't just begin when somebody walks in the property and and on a hot day they find the air conditioning on and on a cold night they find the heating on and it's warm and cosy. It begins long, long before then. Yeah, absolutely. And I think that um, it's interesting because the answer to that question rather depends on how you feel about OTAs versus your own website. Because I think that, that it starts from the very first moment that a guest encounters your business. And whether that's OTA, by that, of course, I mean HomeAway, VRBO, Airbnb, et cetera, or whether that's on your own website, the point is that both of those places should have something that instantly conveys your value proposition. You know, whether you're, not, whether you're on the OTAs, your own website, it's, it's really about making sure you clearly explain that value proposition first up. So what it is you stand for, how it is that you are different from anyone else. And it, that bit's hard because if you're, a, if you're a beachfront condo on Hilton Head Island, you're one of hundreds, thousands possibly. So how is it that you stand out? And I think in those scenarios... It, I, I feel for people who say, but that, I mean, I'm beachfront and I'm a condo, I'm a third floor condo. Like, what, what is what is the different? And I think there you can get into the things that are around how you deliver service. So it's not necessarily your location, but how you deliver your service. So, and, and here it's not necessarily one form of delivery is better than the other. It's much more about which is the form of service delivery that suits the way you are and the, the type of guest you want. So by that, I mean, if you're the kind of person that uh, likes technology, then your value proposition is going to be how you deliver technology in a great way to guests. And so you can differentiate yourself by that. Or you could be someone who is uh, a real sort of concierge style approach. Uh, maybe you're in uh, the kind of location that is one of hundreds or thousands, but you're particularly passionate about 
cooking or or food in the area. And therefore, your approach might be to say that you kind of curate a list of great food places that people might go to when they're staying with you. So it doesn't have to be about location. It can be as much about what you are. And that, that comes down to brand. And it's being able to define your own brand. So you're right. It doesn't start with the person staying in the rental. It starts from the moment they come across your business online, whether that's OTAs or your own website. Can you elaborate a little bit when you say define your brand? What does that what does that mean to you? So to me, it's about the relationship between you and the guest and, and nothing more than, than that. So a lot of people can think about brand as being like a logo and like, you know, flowery language. And it, it is those things. But but all of it has to be rooted in the relationship that you have between you and your guest. So by that, I mean, if you're someone who is highly personable, friendly, likes to meet and greet, um, you know, likes to be very curated in things you do, then then all of that encapsulates your brand. Instead, you might be a 500 property portfolio property manager who may still have that personal touch, but your proposition might be around professional approach where you don't meet and greet your guests, but you have a very well-defined check-in process or uh, key, key, keyless entry uh, or you have uh, something in the home which acquaints them with your business that, that, you know, when they first get there, they understand what you're about. So it, it, it really, brand is about the relationship you have with that guest and not forcing it. So it's whatever that is natural to you. You don't want to be the kind of business or person that says, you know, I have to be chatty and friendly to my guest if that's not really you. I mean, mm-hmm. it, that, that's, you know, that, that, would, that would then be resulting in a poor delivery of service because you would be trying to do something that's not natural and it would go wrong. I think it really comes down to consistency and consistency comes from doing uh, something which is natural to you. Mm-hmm. Um, and I, would, I, would, I would make it as simple as that. Yeah, it um, it reminds me. I, w- I was doing a webinar um, last last night, and um, I don't know whether you've come across Diane Denton at all. I, mm-hmm. I mentioned Diane an awful, you know, su- such a lot because she she sort of personifies the the owner who ha- who's who's got it and <laughs> understands who her persona is, and she has this brand that that. Um, you know, meets the needs of all her guests, and and it's a consistent experience for them. Have have, I, have you heard of Diane? I have, yeah, I have, yes. And I think that the point you make there is 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 the really good one. It's um, it's everything that you do. So she's mastered every aspect of it. So it's not just about you know, are you a foodie or are you a tech person or whatever you think you know your guests will appreciate. But it's 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 making sure that that comes across in every touch point. So your first line of your home away listing might really call out exactly what it is that's different about you. Your website should talk to that. Um, the, the pre-arrival emails should have that kind of sense in them as well. You know, every part of it. And I think that's where the successful people like Diane um, have nailed it, as opposed to someone that thinks a brand is just about their own website and then it doesn't really translate into everything else that, that a customer might find. Yeah, and I think I, I should explain to to anybody who's listening who who hasn't heard of um, Diane Denton, who owns a property in Australia, and her website is seahorsediamondbeach.com.au, and I'll put a link to that on the show notes. And and Diane, you know, she, she's very niche oriented with uh, because she accepts horses at her property, you know, not just dogs, for goodness sake. <laughs> um, but she welcomes horses and she meets the needs of those people who who have this greatest desire to ride their horse on a beach. Fr- from the video that's on the site to everything she offers to her guests with horses, this brand shines through, you know, just every aspect of what she does. So, uh, yeah, I just wanted to uh, to to let let you know what that uh, what that website was and who we were talking about here because it really, I, it really is a good one to go look at. Picking up on that though, because that that to a lot of people that's like you know well she's a one off you know I don't have you know, I don't welcome horses or you know what whatever other you know sort of very very clear standout things are. For example, I, I know um, 
the owners of Beside the Sea Holidays, who have uh, a property management business down here um, on the south coast of England in a place called Canberra Sands. They have about 50 properties. They, on the face of it, I, this is not meant to be derogatory. So if they're listening, Richard, this is not meant to sound derogatory. But on the face of it, they don't do anything special. But the reality is they, they do. The way they define their experience is that their brand is they're very personal. And personal can sometimes be hard to convey. And it can sometimes mean, do I, do I have to meet and greet every guest? And do I have to you know, shake their hand and talk for hours? No. One very, very simple way that, that they consistently get across personality throughout their website, their interactions with guests, on-site stuff, is that they are known as Richard, Sophie, Arthur and Oscar the dog. And Richard and Sophie, husband and wife, Arthur, their toddler, and then Oscar the dog. And it, they sign off emails that way. They have a handwritten postcard in their rentals that's signed that way. And they were saying to me when I met them the other day that they have people who stay with them. And on checkout, they actually bring gifts for Arthur and Oscar. Um, and it's it kind of strikes a chord with people because not, not only are they a 50 property management business, um, but they're able to create that sense of personal touch without necessarily having to meet and greet guests, which they don't, by the way. Mm -hmm. But if they see them about, they'll stop and talk to them. Uh, so there is a way, you know, I think you don't have to be that person who has, you know, a business which is all about riding horses on the beach. You can do it in a much more accessible way. Yeah, I love that. Uh, I, I, I love that concept that this is a property manager who has um, a good amount of properties yet still carries that very personal brand through what they do. That's what we all want. We all want to, if we're staying somewhere, regardless of whether we're staying with a 500 property manager or a single property owner, we, we want to feel a something special about that place. Otherwise, we would be staying in, in, a, in, a, in a bland you know, hotel or something. I mean, price, of course, is a factor. Let's not get away from that. Not everyone books purely on brand it can be a price factor as well but nonetheless i think if you're choosing this kind of accommodation over something else you're doing it for price and other reasons and mm -hmm. i think that, that that sense of feeling you know in some way that you're staying somewhere different or staying somewhere unique or experiencing something or having that kind of personal touch i got an email today from uh, a, a small property management business in, in budapest who uh, they sent me an email that a guest had sent them, um, which said something um, along the lines of, in fact, I think I can dig it out now while I'm on the phone to you. And it was really interesting how it was, um, it was talking about something very, very simple. They had literally, the property manager had sent the guest an email after checkout and had just said, how is your stay? Please let us know if you need any help or you're missing anything, uh, i.e. you've left anything behind. So the, the response from this guest was, thanks for your follow through email. Even five star hotels don't do this. So it's really special in my mind. Both you and husband's name are superb. As what I told him, your apartment was a home away from home. I definitely appreciated all the help that you provided from laundry soap to clothes hanger to the tours, which saved me lots of time in my short stay in Budapest. All the details, all the customer orientation, paying attention when you asked and when, when we needed, really helped me enjoy my stay at your apartment in the city. I'll definitely recommend your place to all my friends and visit next time I'm back. So I think, you know, that that to me was something really, really simple. It was just a follow-up email. Mm -hmm. um, this is also part of the thing, I think, of being consistent. Had this Budapest property manager not been so consistent in the way they dealt with that guest throughout their stay, if they had then emailed that guest and said, how was your stay? The guest probably wouldn't have actually replied. But it was because that email came after lots of other touch points, both pre and during the stay, that the guest kind of felt it a continuation of that, that experience they had. And it wasn't in response to the email, like you're so brilliant and five star hotels don't do this, but it was a culmination of everything that had got to there. That, that makes a huge amount of sense to me as, as a property manager, yet Yet, I think that this Budapest property manager is probably uh, you know, s standing out uh, mm. on their own because I, I think most property managers feel that they, they don't have the time or, or people aren't expecting that sort of, uh, that, that sort of connection. But as you're, as you're explaining that, I'm thinking, gosh, yes, this is, it's, it's not 
difficult. No, I, I don't think I don't think it is. I think that the, the, the Richard and the Beside the Sea holidays example I gave there, they they have consistently five star reviews from people, and it's it was interesting when I spoke to them and I was I was kind of saying, but does this not absorb all your time? This hand holding, and they said, no, we don't hand hold. Um, we just do the simple things that are repeatable, that give a sense of being personal. And we are always accessible if people need us, but they don't necessarily have to be going and checking in that guest and shaking their hands and going and visiting them every couple of days, nor does a guest frankly want that. Um, so I think, you know, listen, I think a 500 property management business is very different to a 50 or, a, or a, you know, a, an owner with a couple. But I think it's proven that, uh, and, and let's face it, the majority of property managers in this industry are definitely at the sub 100 and probably even mm -hmm. sub 50 size. And you can see that it's very, very possible to, to do these kind of things in a, in a really repeatable way. Um, and that, that's part of, we're coming back to consistency again. I think that's why consistency is so important um, and, and being truthful to your brand. Because if you're first of all truthful, it means that you don't have to apply so much effort into thinking about the way you should be because it's just coming naturally. But if, you're, if, if you need to be consistent, you develop a repeatable process. And that's why Beside the Sea is successful. You know, their repeatable process is the signature on the bottom of all of their, their emails. It's that, it's that photo of those two plus the, the, the toddler and the dog. It's the copy, the voice that they have on their, on their website and on the OTAs, which talks to that personal touch. Mm -hmm. And then when the guest comes and stays with them, it's a simple thing of having a, a, a postcard, but it's just manually signed. You know, it's not difficult to have uh, each new guest simply sign your name at the bottom. Um, but you know, when when the guest arrives, there's a there's a little something, and it's not always just a bottle of wine. It's thoughtful. It's something from the local bakery which they've got. Um, it's macaroons from that bakery. And I said to them, "Does that not eat into your margin? Is that not expensive stuff to do?" And they said, "No, not at all. We tell our owners that this is the kind of thing that guests like." And and um, the owners can can choose a package that they want them to pay up to, um, and then they supply these things from that from that um, that add-on fee. So it's not you know it doesn't need to be high maintenance. It doesn't need to be expensive. It just needs to be repeatable um, and consistent. Yes, it's a little bit different in you know in, in our property management company here in Ontario because our, our properties are so widely dispersed that uh, mm -hmm. that our owners manage their own properties. But we we have seen how impactful it is and how much more successful those owners are who do these things because you know we we don't do gift baskets for for all our properties because that's just impossible logistically so our owners if they wish to will do so and we have some owners who like to find out all the the, the ages of all the children that are coming and then they they create an age specific uh kids pack and then there is another owner who, who just wants to know something about every guest group. And she said, it doesn't matter what. Is it a birthday? Is it an anniversary? Is somebody, have we found out that somebody's gluten-free? Um, and then she supplies something that is very, very specific for, mm -hmm. for those guests. And when I look at our availability calendars in sort of January, February time, those are the properties that I've just booked straight through they uh -huh. because you know the reviews are saying what these little touches are and for for a property management company it's it is sometimes difficult to get away from that feeling of impersonality um and and that's how that that's how we do it unfortunately we can't do it with we can't make or our owners <laughs> uh -huh. um offer something like this but it's uh, we, we have the proof that it works and we can go back when we talk to our owners and say, look, you know, this is what's happening with, with these properties. They are getting booked up sooner just because of these little touches and it, it doesn't take much effort. I think that's really interesting. I think that you're, you, you, you're, you've totally hit the nail on the head that you, you can't, not everyone can have this kind of process because it depends on do you have control over that property or is it the owner or, or geographically how you spread like you're quite spread out? Um, but when you, when you start seeing the results of it and you can point to a particular rental outperforming another one, um, 
you're just back to beside the sea again. They have two two cottages next door to each other, identical. They're just a mirror image of each other. One of them rents pretty much solidly. Um, and I'm not going to say the number, but takes a significant gross revenue. The other one takes a quarter of that. And when, when I went to, to stay with them, I said, can I look around the one that doesn't have the same occupancy? And you instantly go in there and you know exactly why. Um, it just has hodgepodge furniture. Um, it's it's not light and airy. It's been it's been badly organized, not just hodgepodge furniture, but put in strange places. Um, it, the, the, all of these things that you can turn to someone and say, look, this one generates X percent of gross revenue. Yours generates a fraction. These are the reasons why. I think you gradually start to win people over, but you're you're probably I mean, I'm not a property manager, obviously, and I'd be interested to get your view, but I should imagine the first time you try and have that conversation with someone, they're like, no, I'm not paying you like $50 extra to, to put in a welcome basket or this and that, because they see it as a, as a, as a, a loss on the bottom line rather than the ability to mm-hmm. times two their gross revenue. Yeah, what, the, the way we, we address it and we, you know, it's taken, I mean, we've been in business 15 years now. So it's taken a while for us to 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 really understand owner acquisition and um, owner education. And one of the first things we say to our owners now is, you know, because we're in an area of repeat guests, you know, 90% of our, our clientele come out of the city of Toronto. So it's easy for them to come back to the same place over and over again. And some will say, you know, I'd love to go somewhere else, but I'm never going to find the perfect spot like this one. So we, we talk to our owners and say, this is the Holy Grail, is the repeat guest. If you can fill your summer every year with the same guests that you had last year and they love it and they treat it like their home, then you won't have any issues. You won't have any issues with overcrowding or breakages or damage. It just won't happen because these people value your home. And that is that, that that's how we lead into how you get repeat guests. I mean, you like every property manager, you have a specificity, a uniqueness to um, your location and you can't apply the same process as another manager does, but you found a different way to to crack the the nut, so to speak. Um, And playing to the repeat business, I think um, is, 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 it's becoming so much more important. Um, you know, Steve Milo um, was at the VRMA in Paris, and and um, and at Amy's mm-hmm. um, VRMA Intel Live in London the following week. And he he was saying that his whole his whole business goal is to is to pay one time for for the guest acquisition, and then it's all about giving them a great experience, following up with them in a non intrusive way making sure they realize that, that they get the best price here, they get the best service, et cetera, and not to pay for that person again, i.e. not to have them come through the OTA, but to come directly to him. I think that's where the OTAs, in my opinion, are, and, and listing sites as well, are, are to be viewed in a very positive light because you don't have to rely on them forever you, but you always need to rely on them for what I would sort of say is the lead generation, that first mm-hmm. time booking. You know, if you just get a portion of that as repeat bookings, the fee that you've paid one time to that OTA is 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 dwarfed by the, the repeat business. Um, so yeah, I think I think owner acquisition and getting them to think about the ways in which, you know, delivering service can encourage people to return. Um is yeah, it's, it's a great approach. I was quite interested, Heather, in how you how you get the information from from the guest about you know are they gluten free or are they celebrating something? How, how do you do that without? We just we just have the greatest staff who who when they talk to guests, um, they'll pull all sorts of mm. information out of them. One of the things is that we, we we generally ask why did you choose this property. And, and the reason for that is because our, our properties are, are so very, very different. You know, we, 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 we have properties on flatland. We might have a property that's got 50 steps down to the beach. So, you know, if we ask the question, why did you choose this property? And it was like, well, it's got a great, it, you know, we, we want to spend time at the beach. And we then one of our, our staff can go back and say, oh, you mentioned beach. This place doesn't actually have a beach. 
And then that gets into the conversation about, you know, what, what they're looking for and maybe this isn't the right place for them. And through that level of personal conversation, we often pull out some really good information on on the guests and and their 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 needs, their desires, what their what their dream vacation is. I mean, the best guests on the phone are the ones who have no idea of what they want. And then we can pull out, you know, we start with, so what would make your dream vacation? And then we can generally find the right property for them. Um, we, we've we've got just around 180 properties, and four full time staff, and we can still do that. So it's not a it's, it's not difficult. Yeah, and then you're able to 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 it's one thing getting the information, but then delivery of that. Mm-hmm. Uh, you're able to, to to do that with the same team as well. Well, yes, because all that that information is then passed to the owners. So so the owners get the the details of the guests, and they get there's a there's a there's a section in that which says what these guests are looking, why they chose your property. Yeah. And in putting it that way, um, we find the owners you know they, they get a little bit puffed up because you know these people have chosen. Yeah their property and of course they've chosen it but it just when yeah. when they're told that they've chosen your property over all the others and this is why then that's yeah. that 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 gives them more motivation to make it special now as i said you know not all do that not all will um will go that extra mile but we're now feeding this into our owner acquisition process so we're we're actually spending more time on acquiring owners and not the properties that makes a lot of sense because it's the property is the bricks and mortar, but what makes it live and breathe is the approach of the owner, isn't it? So yeah, it, it is. It's their philosophy of hospitality. And, and this, you know, this runs across every owner there is, every owner, every host. It doesn't matter whether you know, they're, they're with a property management company or whether they're, they're, they're doing this independently. Um, it's, to me, it's that philosophy of hospitality. And if you, if you haven't got it, you shouldn't be in the business. As a client of ours, uh, Kiowa Island Getaways, they, they have a similar approach to that. They're, they're very much into finding the owner rather than the property um, and being really, really selective about that, not in any snobby way, but just in a way in which they know that they can deliver the best return. Um, if they've got an owner who kind of gets what they stand for and the approach they want to take with guests, um, I can't, I can't, you know, not being a property manager, I, I can imagine there are some owners out there who you have to just kind of grit your teeth and kind of make it work. And that's got to be hard. No, um, no, we, we don't do that anymore. <laughs> we don't, we pass that. Good. <laughs> yeah, we've, um, o- over the years, we, we have what we call is the annual cull um, to, <laughs> in, in, in the fall. And over the years, we, we very gently just, you know, pulled out the ones that, that really don't get it. And yeah. and we, what we have left is the most amazing um, group of owners who who just love the business. Now, some of them, I mean, we've got some of them who live in, in different countries. You know, that's why they're lo- using property management companies. But we have to make sure that the people who are representing their places, they, they're caretakers and they're cleaners and they're maintenance people, all carry this same philosophy of hospitality. So uh, Consistency again. Uh, yeah, I was just looking at their website, and I'll uh, once again I'll put um, I'll put the link to their website on the uh, the show notes um, because the first thing I go to with any website ever is the about us page. If you haven't got an about us website uh, about us page on your website, you're really missing out because I'm not the only one who does this. Um, and theirs, I'm you know I'm I'm sort of glancing through it while I've been talking to you and it's just what a great story just such yeah. a, it's it's a lovely story and it makes me think when I, if I look at this I want to go I if I was going to that location these are the people I'm going to book with because they're real people um and, and I think what's really interesting about this and I'm sure that Jeanette who's the owner of Kew Island wouldn't mind me saying that it's not it's not a it's not a sort of a fancy website i mean it's not but that's not it's the content it's what's in there it's the what you know you you didn't say anything about the website you went straight there and you saw the smiley faces of Jeanette and sean and you know the story there and when you talk to them that's exactly the way they are that's that it's that truthfulness about what your brand is they're not forcing that that is exactly them 
Um, and it's no surprise that, that they have full calendars and repeat, you know, I, I don't want to give their repeat number, but it's high. Um, it, this is, it's not, it's not uh, rocket science. And I think you're right. Part of it is, is having an about us page because it instantly tells you these are people that I can trust in, that I want to stay with, that just look like great people. And I mean, I'm sure there's a portion of guests that go, I don't want to stay with people like that. They're too familiar. And you know what? That's fine. But therefore, you're attracting the kind of guest that does resonate with you and does want to stay with you and is likely, therefore, not to be disappointed. So, yeah, About Us page gets my thumbs up as well. Yeah. And, and you said you said something about their, their, their website. Um, I didn't even I went to I, I found the website. I didn't even look at the front page because I always go to the About Us section first. And if, yeah. if if there isn't one, I'm I'm sort of well, aren't these people proud of what they do? Absolutely, so. yeah. You can see it. You can see it. And one thing that they have said to me is that it's always consistently from their guests. The feedback is they found everything they need on their website. You don't have to have this, you know, sort of beautiful moving video and images and like beautiful, you know, call to action buttons. And it just has to be about getting the right information, looking like you are a business that I want to stay with and just connecting with that guest. So um, I think they've nailed it from that point of view. Yeah, absolutely. So we're we're moving on here, Andy. As ever, when we talk, time just flies away. And I I want to talk about Touch Day because, Mm -hmm. you know, I I talked to Danny Rustine of Optimize Your Airbnb last week and he said something that really, really got to me. He stayed in over 250 um, Airbnbs. And he said, from, from those, he said only 1% of those had a digital guest book of any sort. I'm sure that, you know, it, that, that 250 is a lot for him, but it's a small amount in the great scheme of things. And I'm sure that 1% is, is probably not a true figure across the industry. Um, what, what's your take on that? How many how many owners and property management companies do you think are using digital guest books? I'm not sure it's as low as 1%, but I, I can imagine it's, uh, it's, it's single digits. Mm-hmm. Uh, I could definitely get that. Um, I've, I've not stayed in 250 Airbnbs, but I've stayed in a few, and I've not yet had an Airbnb stay where I've had a digital guest book. In fact, the last one I stayed in in Paris didn't even have a welcome book printed in the rental. What's interesting about that, though, is that the, the host – um, was almost instantly responsive on WhatsApp. Mm. So just said to me, look, my mode of communication is WhatsApp. If you need anything, and sure enough, when I got there and I didn't know what the Wi-Fi password is, <laughs> I had a connection to the web via 4G, but I didn't know what the Wi-Fi was. So I just, I just WhatsApp him. Instantly, I get it back. Um, I needed to turn off the heating. Instantly, he told me what it was. So I think that um, there's a couple of points I'm making here. I guess one is. It, it wouldn't surprise me that it's that it's that low because I kind of have felt that not in staying at 250, but in staying the ones I have, I've not experienced one. Um, I think the second point is it doesn't necessarily you don't necessarily need to have one, even though I'm in the business of selling one. I, I don't, you know, if you've got a different kind of approach like that instant sort of uh, access, then that works. I do think the downside there though is you're reliant on the guest wanting to communicate in that form with you. You know, WhatsApp might not be something that everyone uses. Um, and I think that what what is interesting about Airbnb Plus as well that I was I was looking at, one of their requirements is the, is the printed guest book. Um, and I find that curious as well, that uh, that it's it's all about having something printed in, in, in the rental. So I think that there are the majority that still have something printed or, or even in a PDF. I think that there's there's those that rely on just communicating, and then there is a portion which is the digital side. Um, I also think it's a factor of the digital guest book um, sort of product being, for the last couple of years, perhaps not really on the radar of people. As much as they're my competition, you know, people like Hostfully, You're Welcome, Coral, even Hello Here Now, they're they're new. There's, there's a lot of us in this space. There, it's a big market. So, you know, it's not like uh, uh, any of us going to struggle for, for competing with each other. I think there's a, lot, there's a lot of market out there. But that has helped, I think, the sort of the digital guestbook subsector, the micro sector of this industry, 
um, grow. And I think that that is where I see 2018 onwards uh, being a being a growth time for us. I think it's it's becoming much more um, top of mind with people. And I would also say that there is a portion of the industry which doesn't want to use something like glad to have you, which is tied to to home away. They would like something that is independent um, of of the listing site. Uh, I'm not into saying what one product has that, a do- that another doesn't. But I would say that, that um, the, the, the likes of, of the, the ones I mentioned, I would say the sort of the new kids on the block. And I, w- I would say Touch Day is that, even though we're, we're still a couple of years old, I would still say we're relatively new in thinking. I think all of us have our, on our side the advantage of thinking a bit differently about what a guest welcome book should be. And we especially listen to everything that, that – that, uh, that our, our community tells us. In fact, <laughs> when we released our new design a couple of weeks ago, um, I fielded some pretty tricky emails from people, which were, what have you done? Why have you changed it? What on earth is this? Um, and at, at, at first I was, you know, my heart sunk and I was like, oh, what have we done? And I thought about it and I spoke to our designer and our designer said, Andy, this is a positive thing. People are passionate about using your product. It's great. Do you think that, that, and he wasn't comparing us to Apple, but he was making the Apple analogy. He said, do you think that you know version 7 stops at version 7? No, it goes 7.1, 7.2, 7.3. 7. And it's all about iteration. And what we did is we just took that feedback, and because we're small enough, we made those tweaks to what we'd done. And in my mind, ended with something that was way better than I imagined it would be and was welcomed by the community of users. So coming back to the question about 1%, I think that um, it doesn't surprise me because of, of everything I've said, but I do think that that the likes of us, hostfully, Coral, you're welcome, hello here, etc. we're all kind of moving the agenda along a bit. And I think together we help the whole industry sort of understand what a welcome book can deliver. And I'm excited about what a welcome book can become. It's it's not just a static thing where you present information. It's not just about push. I think there's a lot of pull that can be done there as well. I think, you know, you described how you how you start to understand a bit more about the guests that are coming to stay with you. Well, I think that's a future of the of the product. There is no, from what I've seen anyway, there is no full sort of guest experience, almost um, CRM style product. And you know, why not these, these tools become interactive with a guest? And, and the trick there is to make it efficient so that a property manager can act on the things that a guest is doing inside the book. Um, but, I, but I think it's really exciting. And I think that um, whilst it's 1% of the base that are using a digital welcome book, that represents opportunity to me because it means that there's a whole 99% out there that are waiting for the product. Where are you with Touch Day at the moment? Well, fortunately for us, uh, having started in 2014, we, we've got a super stable product. Uh, and those that are using the product, happy with it. There's no sort of performance issues, that kind of thing. Um, you know, what I alluded, to, I alluded to it in the first part of the conversation where I referenced my time at Victoria Beckham in the last year being um, negative that's from a point of view of not having been able to focus on touch day. And during the last year, 2017, we've seen these other players come to the market. And in some respects, I think that helps because it, it now means 2018 is the time where we're all trying to grow. And having done the rebrand and the redesign for touch day, for us, it's very, very much about taking that product and developing a new functionality. I, I think that you know, a welcome book in 2014 was still fairly early in thinking. I would like the next iteration to be early in thinking now. Like what is coming next in the welcome book sector in this sort of guest experience, guest interaction and developing on that. So we're talking to someone, I don't want to talk too much about it, about a CTO. It's the first time we will have had a CTO in the business. We've recently had Tyan Marsink join the company, which we think is fantastic. Tyan comes with a huge amount of experience. We've got a development team now as well in Ukraine. You know, we're kind of ready to push on with the next stage of this. And I, I'm, I think that, that, as I said, 1% means there's an opportunity. Yeah, that's fantastic. Um, and you're going to be at VRSS this year? I am indeed, yes. And you are delivering a presentation. So yep. um, 
any just a few words about that. So if anybody's listening who's thinking who's still we've still got a few people sitting on the fence about whether they should come or not. So tell them what you're going to talk about and maybe well, that even, will encourage them. Even before what I'm going to talk about. I mean, I didn't go last year, but I went to the first year and I would say it's 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 the only conference where I felt like a genuine energy in the room. And I don't know whether that happened last year as well. So uh, but the year before it was it was you kind of felt it was progressive and people wanted to be there and there was this openness to talking and some of the presentations were not your usual run of the mill presentations. And, you know, it was a, it was an event that you went to where you heard some fresh thinking. Um, and I hope this year is going to be the same. I've seen some of the speakers I've seen, you know, Matt's going to be there again, David Angotti. I think, you know, those, those are just great people to listen to. Uh I think everyone's heard of Matt. Fewer people have heard of David, but when you listen to David talk, that guy has just got, not any wealth of experience, but a, a great way of delivering um, and talks common sense. So I think those two people alone are probably worth the ticket. You know, the likes of us who are like the supporting cast can <laughs> hope to stand up and deliver something. And we're going to talk a little bit about um, <clears throat> some of the survey we've done in the last year. So I don't know how many people are aware. At Guest Hook, we've, we've had a survey rolling for probably three or four months now, uh, which seeks to understand where people are spending their marketing money and the level of confidence they have in spending. And I, I, I have got early results already from, from the people that have submitted. And there's a staggering lack of confidence about where to spend money. And I think that talks a little bit to the flux that the industry is in about, you know, should uh, we be running our own website? Should we be giving our properties up to property managers because, you know, we can't really compete anymore? I think there's a lot of I don't want to say angst, but just confusion about how to navigate through that. And although we don't have the answers, and, and if anyone does, I think they're they're they're, they're probably um, probably better than 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 all of us together. But we can suggest some things, and so we're going to take some of those those results about lack of confidence and think about how you can be more confident in where you spend your money. Um, and we'll touch on some of the stuff we spoke earlier about consistency of brand and the consistency of presenting things in in, uh, in your different touch points. Um, so it'll be a very it'll be a very I, I don't want to and I don't like giving talks where it's theoretical and and we end up not really saying anything. So it's it's hopefully going to be uh, takeaway stuff as well. Excellent. Well, I can't wait to uh, to get together again in San Antonio. Um, it, it will have been over two years. <laughs> Yeah, crazy. <laughs> I know crazy. the time flies far too fast, um, but it will be an absolute delight to to get together with you again, uh, Andy, at that time. So thank you so much for joining me. I think it's been a, a terrific conversation. Your, your experience in in the business with the platforms you've been running is just invaluable. And I know you talk to people all the time. You're you're just one of these people. Uh, there's quite a few of us that live, eat, and breathe it. And, and the more you talk to people, the more you understand. And I think yeah. that, uh, you know, that's the only way to uh, to learn a bit more and, to, to, and then to develop something which matches what you mm -hmm. hear rather than thinking, you know, what the answer is and developing something that's just not fit for the industry. Well, I think the fashion industry's loss is definitely the vacation rental industry's gain. Thank you so much, uh, Andy. And, uh, and I'll see you in, uh, in May. You're welcome, Heather. Look forward to it. Cheerio. So that was wonderful to talk to Andy. Thank you so much, Andy, for for, for joining me um, to talk about Touch Day, to talk about your experiences and, and how to master the guest experience. And you came up with some great examples. So I will put uh, links to those examples that uh, that Andy mentioned on the show notes so you can go and, and take a look. There will also be an article by Andy about this very topic in the next issue of VRM Intel magazine. So make sure that you are a subscriber to VRM Intel because it is the best magazine in the industry. Okay, last but not least, if you have not got your ticket yet to the Vacation Rental Success Summit, get in touch with me for a discount code. Um, we'd love to see you there. We're, we're just wrapping up the, uh, the agenda um, and we have all our speakers. We're really happy to be having um, Evelyn Badia, who's just joined our um, our speaker platform, who's going to come along. I'm not sh quite sure what Evelyn is going to be talking about, but for those 
Airbnb hosts who follow Evelyn and the hosting journey, you should definitely come along and and listen to Evelyn. And she is just the most amazing character as well. You don't want to miss that. So that's it for another week. Let's hope next time I talk to you, I can talk about better weather because it seems like a broken old record, doesn't it? And uh, I'd, I'd like to have that changed. So until then, thank you so much for listening. I'll be with you again soon. This episode of Vacation Rental Success is over, but don't worry, Heather will be back soon. Want more great resources? Visit cottageblogger.com for tips, tricks, downloads, and strategies to help you achieve profit from your vacation rental business.